All right, welcome everybody to the comic panel. I'm Cody. I'm Taylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. And today we are going to be covering Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzicelli uh, mm-hmm. with Richmond Lewis. Mm-hmm. Who, Richmond Lewis, uh, if I remember correctly, is married to David, I think. Is who? Richmond Lewis, I believe, is married to David. David. So. Oh, David Mazzicelli? Yeah. Okay. I, I oh, so. gotcha. Because Richmond Lewis <laughs> is a woman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, good to know. I was mm-hmm. like, who's David? You know? <laughs> 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 Wait, is his name Dave? No, it, it is oh, David. Okay. I just was, like, confused <laughs> oh, gotcha. which David, because I, I assumed when married, sharing the same last name. And so oh, I was like, gotcha. yeah. yeah. Also, Todd Klein letter. Or wait, mm. or is it Todd Klein that she's married to? It, it, it might be that guy, actually. There's a marriage it's in there somewhere. The creative team of this book yes. is married. Yes, yes. To Richmond Lewis, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting tidbit. Yeah. Um, all right. So I picked this book. Um... And I pretty much picked it because it is critically acclaimed. Um, And I was kind of interested, you know, just like there's a lot of people, you know. It's just a classic Batman story, basically, um, from the 80s that I haven't read yet. Hmm. Um, I've read. Really? Yeah. I was going to say, I was surprised that we haven't read this on the show. Oh, yeah. Nope already have you read it yeah i have the like physical copy oh no way <laughs> which is La-dee-da. pretty rare for me. <laughs> <laughs> so i do too do you have the physical no i don't have oh, the physical no. copy. well half of us have it physically <laughs> half of us don't yeah i i okay I'll, to be fair when like cody said the name of the book we were doing this week i was like it sounds like a famous one i think mm, <laughs> That's all yeah. like that. and then coincidentally like i think Less than a few days later, I went to a garage sale and saw it, and I was like, I oh, love yeah. that cover. I'm like, also, I've seen that title somewhere. <laughs> mm, gotcha. <laughs> Which I, like, never buy, like, Batman or superhero stuff normally, because it's usually like, ah, oh, the cover is gorgeous, but then you get inside, and you're like, eh, not mm, the same yeah. caliber. Gotcha. And my my only experience with Batman Year One is the movie that they, like, the animated movie mm. that they made, mm-hmm. not, I don't know, like, 2009. I'm not quite sure. So you know the plot of that in comparison mm-hmm. to this. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I will say is pretty, pretty this similar. So. Yeah. I'm gonna say I think it is a fairly accurate. Yeah. Like adaptation. Mm-hmm. Or as faithful is probably the correct word for an adaptation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's uh kind of why I picked it. Like you know, for instance, I've read uh, Frank Miller's other uh Batman work uh. Bat, or The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what it is. And um, I've also read, like, you know, The Killing Joke, Death in the Family, you know, all that stuff. I, th- I feel like those are kind of like some of the seminal 80s Batman works. Actually, okay. Death in the Family might be 70s, but I digress. Um, hmm. So, yeah, this basically is... Uh, it was published after... Um, Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, which was DC's, Mm. uh, you know, basically rebooting the franchise for the first time. And so they needed a new, like, starting point for Batman because they didn't really want to change much about him, but they did want to essentially reintroduce him to new readers. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, because they, and they were like, well, he's perfect, like. Yeah, more or less, yeah. You know, they they didn't have any, you know, <laughs> anything mm-hmm. that was all like, nah, this is too campy or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And so, um, yeah, so that's basically kind of how this book came about as far as, like, what they were looking for. And Frank Miller wanted to uh, do it, I guess, because, you know, he had written Dark Knight Returns, which is, you know, in an Elseworlds story, but it is, like, you know, his end, basically. So it was, like, writing his beginning, too. Mm. His end before they made two sequels? Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
Okay. Which are not as good. Not oh, as good. Okay. Alert. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So is Batman Year One like considered canon, or is that also a different world? You know. Um, it is considered canon, I believe. Mm. Gotcha. Um, yeah, like it's. I'd say it's fuzzy canon. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, soft canon. It's like people will reference it, but it's not. It doesn't mean necessarily that like this whole story happened. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, especially as, like, you know, other reboots have happened and, like, Jim Gordon has been de-aged and such. Mm. Um, Like, I mean, we'll get into it in the summary, but, like, I didn't even know that he had a son. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why are so many people named Barbara? Yeah. In in, in general? Well, Well, doesn't he get a daughter? Yeah. (laughs) Who's named Barbara, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not super creative, James Gordon is with the names. Yeah. I'm he has pretty... a son, he names it after himself. He has a daughter, he names it after <laughs> Not super creative. Okay, you know, I, I guess I kind of assumed that um, Barbara was born and Barbara, the daughter, was born. And then Barbara, the wife, died in childbirth or something like that. I mean, that's... And they named it, and he named her after... That's what I assumed too, but I thought that Barbara was an only child. I was like, uh, yeah, where, "Where'd James yeah. go or come?" Like, that's fair. <laughs> like, that's fair. Well, you know, he was in Batman Begins, or well, Dark Knight. He was seen in Dark Knight, but kind doing of reference to Batman Begins in the movie. Yeah, as a baby doing what? No, I'm, I don't know how old he was. I mean, he was like five, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasn't what, wasn't those of the kids that uh, Harvey Dent like held captive? And he was like, maybe I don't remember right. that movie. All right, all right, fine. <laughs> you know, you know, consider the greatest Batman movie ever, and you know, we don't remember it. Fine. The, the greatest for me is the Batman. I'm just gonna really? say it. Yeah. Okay, that's the fair. New one? Yeah. That is oh. fair. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I live I, action at least. You know. I, I will agree with you there. Yeah, I am uh, an anti Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, <laughs> no, stand. okay, oh, I will not agree <laughs> with you there, though. <laughs> well, okay, I'm not. I'm not specifically anti those movies. I'm anti championing, championing, champ, championing, championing. <laughs> yeah, that word doesn't work vocally. I'm also gonna say that. That's my other hot take. <laughs> how, many, how many hills are you getting ready to die on? As <laughs> so many as I need to. Um, anti championing those yeah. movies as like the greatest. I see. Okay, yeah. that's fair. You're just just say that you're saying they're overrated. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I don't like them as much. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, all right. <laughs> anyway, though, so um, in this book, basically, we get fifty percent perspective of Bruce Wayne starting his. Um, journey of becoming Batman you know he's this is him coming back to Gotham he has traveled the world already you know not not clear where he's gone but he has you know done training to become Batman and now he's actually starting on what that's going to be but he hasn't even decided what or that he will be Batman you know Mm, yeah he just seems to have the aim of putting fear into this the bad people mm-hmm. in Gotham. Yeah. Right. And and I think that that was even something he didn't even realize either. Because, like, he came back to Gotham and he was like, I want to fight the criminal element. But there's some, like, I have the training, I have the means, but there's something missing. And, like, throughout the course of the story, he discovers I need to put fear in them. Mm-hmm. Well, he's even towards the beginning when he gets attacked by um, the pimp and the few other people yeah. on the street. He goes, I need them to fear. I need well, to make them yeah. fear. I mean, that, that's what I mean. Like, before that, he didn't know what, how he was going to do, go about that. Well, he and doesn't know how to do it, but he seems to have the vague aim. They need them to fear. <laughs> gotcha. At least that's how I feel. Gotcha. Yeah. And we also get um, the perspective of James Gordon, the... Mm. Uh, He's not commissioner yet. He is transferring from Chicago to Gotham 
after oh, okay. um, an incident uh, where he was, he basically protected um, another uh, person from po- uh, police brutality, and so mm. he was reprimanded for that. Gotcha. He, like, he put another cop in jail, I think, right? Or, yeah, or or otherwise. They you know, see beat it as a betrayal. Yeah. yeah. And so he's it, literally, he gets there and they're like, yeah, we'll forgive your past mistakes as long as you're loyal to us, which, you know, of course, yeah. upholding corruption. It's always a bad sign when it's like the first thing you hear <laughs> when you get to a new employer is like, yeah, we'll forgive you as long as you're absolutely loyal, 100%. Uh, Don't yeah, ask any questions. I, I enjoy that. James entered and he was like, look, I know I've made some mistakes. And he was like, what mistakes? And then later he's like, like look. The media didn't see, did they? <laughs> yeah. It's fine. But then even later he's like, look, we even took you in and you had your blemishes. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's a mistake. <laughs> Only when we wouldn't care. Yeah. But that's because, what is it? He's like rubbing all the wrong people the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, like his fellow cops, like Flass, that particular mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. And so he ends up getting beat up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They want to, was it they want to soften him up? Is what they say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the commissioner, who's very corrupt, like archetypal villain looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so when I was reading that guy, I, I don't know this actor's name, but like he he's often seen in like comedic roles. And I don't know if you've any, ever seen Haunted Mansion at all, but like he was the butler in mm. that that like was kind of the evil mastermind behind it. I have seen that Spoiler. movie. I don't mm. remember. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Basically, like when when the commissioner was speaking, I kind of imagined his voice. Fan like, casting. I I don't know if I would like him to play that because he's <laughs> but maybe. I'm say that's just you, Taylor. That's that is just your mind made that connection. <laughs> I mean, fair. I, I, I'll take that. <laughs> Why'd you bring it up if you don't like the casting? No, I'm just saying that that's how I imagined his voice sounding. Mm. It's just a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it is. This is what... What, this is what happened. That's it. I do love the commissioner being like, well, you can't draw attention to me if you want to beat up one of your fellow police officers. So yeah. wait until I leave town as if it's like as soon as he walks out the right. door, it's like, well, I don't know what they do. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't remember how exactly this this gets started. Like it's because I, I, I think it's just like so the story is told like through like journal entries, essentially. So. Or narration, yeah. 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 And so they, like, um, you know, they'll have a general entry for this specific date, and then maybe a couple of weeks later, like, it'll be another one. And so if I remember correctly, like, um, it goes to, it goes from we see James Gordon um, first being introduced to Gotham and the police, and then we next see... Uh, Flass talking to the commissioner, being like, man, he's just not fitting in, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that how I'm supposed to understand that? Yeah, I mean, I'd say so. Like, uh, basically, he is uh, not really able to stomach any of the corruption, you know, Mm -hmm. that exists in the GCPD. Yeah, it's literally between February 12th and February 26th. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a real parallel between Bruce because Bruce yeah. arrives literally the same day as Gordon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to Gotham, yeah. and and I noticed that too because um, the beginning, Gordon is talking about like he sent Barbara uh, via the plane because going through the train is like no, no. Yeah, he's going on the train yeah. personally, mm-hmm. but yeah. God. But then Bruce is like, yeah, I'm flying in a plane. I should have came in in a train. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he wants to be among them kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. It, See the criminal element. Yeah, so it goes throughout, and it's slowly building to where... Because Gordon's against Batman, right? Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. And he keeps trying to figure out who it is. He, he suspects Harvey Dent. What is it? He's like, ah, lifting weights, huh? Mm-hmm. Lawyer boy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um... But then, you know, 
as the police really crack down on Batman. I think Gordon sees, you know, firsthand Batman saving the old lady, Batman mm. saving the cat, and so forth, and he starts to, like, uh, question his beliefs about whether Batman's the worst thing in this city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also start to get, like, um, there's occasional interludes of perspective from uh, Selena Kyle, who mm. will become Catwoman. Mm. Um, and, like, yeah. kind of her transformation into Catwoman, I guess. She's gotcha. supposed to be, like, a sex worker at first, right? Right, mm. yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting how quickly she's like, we're going to change professions. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm going to go spend all my money on a suit. I was like, where did yeah. you get that suit? <laughs> Well, I mean, it'd be a bad idea if it, like, didn't work super well. <laughs> she wasn't, like, yeah, super you gotta, good you, at you, fighting. You got to put in money to make money. You know? I do. I really love, though, where she's, like, I wanted everyone to know it's Catwoman. Yeah. These, like, big-time robberies are doing. Like, Selena, no. Because basically, like, she's doing these, um, like, criminal acts. People keep thinking that it's Batman, or like, she's oh, related man, to does, Batman. Yeah, does Batman love robbing people <laughs> <laughs> secretly? And technically, the best case scenario for her in that <laughs> she's robbing people, but nobody knows it's her. Yeah. That's great. I do love. I love how much of a personality there is there, where she's like, "Oh, I have to leave some scratch marks next time, so they know <laughs> it's me." Yeah. yeah, like why am I even dressing up like a giant cat if nobody's gonna know? <laughs> 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 that is the Gotham villain's downfall. It's like, yeah, it's all well and good, but I don't have a gimmick. I need to start leaving stuff behind so people know that it's me. Mm. The police aren't going <laughs> to not going to keep up. <laughs> oh, oh man. So so um in the edition that I had, they had like a little bulletin, like newspaper mm-hmm. showing like myriad of stories. Right, 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 yeah. And so a story in that was mirrored in the comic itself um, with this random woman being chased down by this guy. Oh. And so basically, like, to describe how bad the cops are, is in the comic, it's this woman is being mugged. She is able to, like, run away, and he's chasing after her. And then the narration is like, well, you see that... You see that that dude sitting there in the corner? Like that's actually a police it's all detective. Set up, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a trap for Batman. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. i okay, I failed to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, but gotcha. Like, because I think it took took a little bit, yeah. But gotcha. you definitely realized through his narration of like people know not to like take a midnight walk. This is such a like mm. obvious like Oh, okay. no, poor little me down a dark alleyway. Gotcha. And then just at the perfect moment, a mugger. But, you know, okay. it's just all police. Gotcha. I, I was, I, I forgot that part, so I was you, under the impression. Do you remember who the woman is? She's no. the police officer who Gordon is kind of having oh, an affair is that with. The, yes, oh, that is her first okay. introduction, I'm pretty sure. Oh, so that, so that was Essen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Detective Essen. Sarah yeah. Essen. Mm-hmm. Which, important uh, plot detail. Yes. <laughs> uh so, so the the story, the like the of the bulletin clipping though is different because it's a similar setup. Except the police are there; they're just incompetent. Mm. <laughs> like that's, and so and so this guy like like goes up to the register, orders some food, and instead of paying like two fifty, he's like, "Yo, I got a gun. You know how this goes." And all the cops are there, and they're just like. Yeah, I'm just eating the don- donut. <laughs> yeah, watching <laughs> like that. Like that's how it was um, described. Right. It's very good. It was. Um, but anyway, so yeah, eventually uh, Gordon does uh, start having an affair with uh, one of his uh, fellow officers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And. Yeah. God, he tries to break up on like September second, and then September seventh, he's just like kissing her again. Yep, mm-hmm. it could not last a week. Which, of course, it becomes uh, a method of blackmail right. by the commissioner. Right? They're like, we have pictures, so he has mm-hmm. to tell his wife so that yeah. she'll be like, I already know. Yep. I. I Which also, I mean. Hmm? Oh. So Go. You, no, you, okay. Which I mean, I gotta hand it to him, like. If you if you mess up like that, at, at least he confessed. I will give him that. 
I don't, I don't like when the fact that he to did a that. When corner, he <laughs> confessed. Yes, that's <laughs> the truth. Hey, but you know, but he did do like, it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Miss Gordon's a real Tammy Wynette. Stands by her man. I don't think I, I got that reference. I'm, I'm so no? close, okay. Jake. I'm so close. I'm almost there. I think it's the the person who sings "Stand by Your Man." The uh, country oh, song. that is not what I was thinking at all. Uh-huh. I do <laughs> know that song. Her man. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, which I mean, I'm on, honestly glad to see. I I, I, I like mean, that. Yeah, uh, she'd be more than like in the correct by leaving, but also like. I mean, mom has a kid on the way in yeah. Gotham. Like, oh, that's that's bad times. I mean, I, yeah. I don't I don't think she would be more in the correct in the sense that like there there's still like a way to salvage that. And again, they they are having a kid together. To me, like yeah, that. But like I I you couldn't blame her if she did leave. That that's fair. Yeah, yes, James is 100 percent wrong. Yeah, for what he did. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Okay, right. gotcha. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think Essen transfers to New York, New, New York. York, yes, because mm-hmm. yeah. she used to work in Chicago. Mm-hmm. He's like, Why didn't we ever meet? Because she was in high school, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Frank Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how he said it. He was like, Man, you know, yeah, we just never met. I was like, Come to think of it, she would have been in high school. <laughs> Okay, so the ending plot, because the commissioner is like, this isn't working, uh, this isn't working. Uh, they end up, they're just going to kidnap the baby and Barbara. Oh, my gosh. And in the middle of it, Gordon shoots a motorcyclist who he thinks is part of it. Turns out it's Bruce, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. And I love Bruce on the <laughs> bicycle. <laughs> uh, so Gordon chasing the the car with the baby in it. And yeah. That one scene, yeah, where the, they fight and then the baby falls off the bridge that they're on. <laughs> and who jumps after it but Bruce. Yep. Yeah, and then, of course, Gordon being there, too. He's like, I'm practically blind without my glasses, so you should leave. Kind of mm. like he knows who it is. Yeah. Yeah, he, he doesn't know that it's Bruce Wayne, but he knows that, or he thinks it's Batman, is how I kind of Yeah, I wasn't, I, I wasn't sure knows. about that, because mm. as somebody who genuinely cannot see without my glasses that just seems like a statement of fact but just like he can't see without his glasses yeah. okay but so get out of here before somebody who can see gets here huh. it's blurry it's blurry i don't have good eyes i don't know how good your eyes are but my eyes are awful you Let's still see the personal. colors you you're yeah. like you know it's a dude who's right. like probably has like bigger stature than you and like he's met this person before obviously they were putting on a facade when they met bruce wayne earlier <laughs> Bruce Wayne, yeah. the Playboy. Mm-hmm. Um, gotcha. And then he hears his voice. Like Bruce talks to him, like for yeah. one moment, I think. Yeah. Oh, he literally just says yes when he mm-hmm. asks him, "Are you wearing armor under that, under that jacket?" Which he knows he's wearing a jacket. Mm, mm. Big clue. <laughs> yeah, okay. I I, th- I interpreted that to mean he absolutely knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. He okay. had a short list of suspects, and that's fair. Only one of them matches, even in a blurry. You know. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, he's like, I've got a friend coming who might be able to help. Should be here any minute. At the very end, that's what Gordon is saying. Mm-hmm. And so he's obviously waiting for Batman. Mm-hmm. So I feel like he knows it's Bruce. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, how else do you make Yeah, I just didn't really again? know how to interpret it. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, having glasses and not being able to see without them, it could just be like, yeah, get out of here for somebody who can't see mm-hmm. gets here. No, that's fair. It that's sounds fair. like a funny little excuse. Mm-hmm. Like, we both know I know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your, your secret is safe with me because I'm not even going to accept that I know. <laughs> Thank goodness the bridge is empty, though. There's yeah. nobody, like, not a crowd staring there like, hey, Bruce Wayne just saved that baby. <laughs> Actually, as the tabloids would say, Bruce Wayne drops baby off bridge, <laughs> chases it <laughs> off a bridge. Yeah, drops the baby to catch it. No, uh, Bruce Wayne chases baby off a bridge and then <laughs> catches it in the end, but is stopped at the last moment by police officer Gordon. <laughs> I I love in the comic where um, he, Bruce is like, yeah, I need an alibi. So uh, 
I made an appearance, and the the guy at the door was uh, obliged enough to ask for an autograph, and then, ah, tabloids. He's in the same place as a famous star, like, ooh. Man, mm. That's a different thing. That was, well, he had that one where he's like, yeah. I'm just going to go to the same hotel. I'm going to go, not really go there, to the same hotel as some, like, Hollywood star who's in town. Mm-hmm. But then when it, they had the skiing at the Alps or whatever. Yeah, no, I, I'm i talking about the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. I do like the one at the Alps, too. Yeah. I guess we're starting to get into what we like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We Which, are I at mean, the end of the summer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's all those little things about how Bruce thinks about, uh, well, just in general, overall, how the characters uh, rationalize and then also just get out of trouble, I guess. Like, I really do like how Bruce is like, yeah, I just told them there was a woman involved and they were so cool with it, like (laughs) covering for me. Like even one of the guys pretended to be me. Mm. So Yeah. She's like, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do that. If I worked (laughs) at a ski resort, I'd be like, sorry, no can do. (laughs) I I would do the fake, it would be the fakest like accent, like very obviously not them. Yeah. Just to see if I can mess with them. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on, think about it, Cody. What if, like, someone really famous that you admire showed up? <laughs> Asked you to be him. I don't know if I admire that many famous. Okay, people. but it's not just one of them, though. <laughs> like, Bruce Wayne did not ask to be impersonated. Like, when Gordon calls, like, it's just some guy. <laughs> He's like, like, "Hello, who, it's like, me, Bruce Wayne." He's <laughs> like, "Okay, who on the staff could do the best Bruce Wayne accent?" Accent. Oh, okay. Like, so, so he would have... didn't ask them to like, yeah, impersonate me. It's just some dude. Wait, are, right, are yeah. you sure about that? Like, well, I think so. Yeah, he just asked them to cover for him, and they're oh, like, yeah, yes, it's time for my greatest act uh, of all time. Like, like to me, to to say like cover for somebody, like in a sense, is asking, but like, well, I, I can't. Yeah, like, I mean, covering like, for someone yeah. is normally like, yeah, they're here. Uh, Mrs. So and So versus like it's me, Billy, your son. <laughs> it's yeah, like covering for him would just be like, yes, he's here. No, we can't get him on the phone. I'm looking no, at no, him no, right no, no, now. No, 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 no. You wouldn't you even would, say yes, he's here. Dinner, dinner. It's like you do not like start up an impression. <laughs> <laughs> I paid. Like, I know improv. I can handle this. I got it. I paid good money <laughs> for privacy and discretion. Do not, under any circumstances, let them know I'm here. I'm well, looking at him right now. No, I will not put him on the phone. Well, no, 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 no. They want, but that's the thing is that he wants to be at the, the Alps because um, he is in Gotham being Batman. But I mean, he doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne in Gotham, able to talk to the police. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, definitely does. I mean, he didn't. I do agree. He did not ask to be impersonated. I just want the extra Interesting. mile. Yeah. <laughs> but, Interesting. But yeah. Okay. That's what you pay for at whatever Swiss chalet. I, okay. <laughs> That's at. fair. Wait, isn't this after? No, this is before. Oh, damn it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, is this before Gordon meets Bruce? Yes. Yes, it's yeah. before. Okay, so he's, here's that. <laughs> that voice. <laughs> he meets <laughs> him. Ah, yeah, uh, see? It's, difference. It's a, it's a long-distance phone call. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, to be fair, people always sound different on the phone. Mm-hmm. That's all it is, Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> and when I talk on the phone, I sound like I'm Swiss. <laughs> yeah, just maybe Swiss accent. Got to sneak some there. I no, just, no, no. He's he's in like in like you know he's in the that, culture. Oh, when yeah. I'm in the Alps, I yes, go into Swiss culture. mode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entering Swiss mode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like little things like that, you can just pick apart, which is like, this is kind of funny in a really <laughs> weird way. Like yeah. all those little things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Selena's whole thing again, like we were talking about where Selena's like, darn it, why'd I pay extra for these claws if nobody's going to appreciate them <laughs> mm-hmm. and how much damage I can do to their face? <laughs> uh, just wanting, um, and then at the end, was it like the Joker getting mentioned? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like that. Was, that. that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Does this have a continuation? I think, 
eventually, probably with different writer artists, because I saw, like, there's um, Batman Year 3 that, like, you mm. know, and that involves um, Dick Grayson, Robin, basically, and his origin. Well, I mean, I if gotcha. this did super good like it did, then, of course, they're going to yeah. make a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Well, Long Halloween is also a sort of pseudo-sequel. Really? Which oh. I also don't think we've uh, read. Yeah. I, I saw the two-part movie that they did recently. <laughs> There's too many things. I uh, Yeah, they made a bunch of animated movies that yeah. were vaguely related, unless they weren't, until well, they were. Well, this one was specifically Batman Long Halloween. Live action? Yeah. No. No, animated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I might have read Long Halloween once, but I don't remember it. Mm. So maybe I didn't. Gotcha. But yeah. I, I can see, you know, the Catwoman costume is very similar mm. um, in this to that. I, and I know I've seen that at least. Gotcha. So yeah. It's, it's really funny how her costume, if I remember, it's kind of weird and ugly in some parts. Yeah. Like, I kind of like that. It's normally <laughs> just like sexy costume mm-hmm. versus where it's like unruly looking paws, mm. like gotcha. weird almost fur suit. Yeah. Mm. And it's purple. Mm. Not the, the slick leather that um, has become common in modern interpretations. Gotcha. So you want them to go back to campy? <laughs> Well, I, I'm not uh, saying it's campy. Would you describe this comic as campy? No. 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 I don't know. No. Like, I guess to, to me, like, the costume design itself is in the categorized as campy. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah. Because, like, I look at that and I'm like, that doesn't look like a modern costume. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. I mean, it definitely is uh, evoking her. Original costume, mm-hmm. basically, from yeah. the Golden Age comics. I mean, it definitely feels more realistic, right? Like, I asked for a giant oh, no. cat costume. <laughs> right, yeah. Somebody right. had a bunch of purple fabric laying around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's something you would pick up at, like, a Halloween store, which I imagine okay. in Gotham are year-round. <laughs> 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 That's why they call it the Long Halloween. Mm, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> There's just so many details you can, like, pick apart, like, the fact that Gordon was sent to Gotham, which is, like, I messed up a little bit by, like, betraying, (laughs) in quotation marks, my fellow police officers. You get sent to Gotham? Mm. That's, like, exile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, send him to the pit, basically. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Send him to the crime pit. (laughs) Which, like, I was talking to somebody about this book uh, earlier this week, and they were like, man... Like, to, to think that basically, you know, uh, you are you have to leave, like, Chicago, you know, basically. <laughs> it's like, that's so violent there. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, I, I can't remember who it was, but it's, it's a pretty famous uh, Batman author said, like, Gotham is the worst parts of New York and New Jersey set in an island where it's, like, always nighttime. <laughs> Like, it is the worst place in the world. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hence why, I mean, yeah, hence why the hero has to be worse in a way. Yeah. Cannot be Superman. Mm-mm. Which but is really, yeah, that's... <laughs> I do like the mentioning Superman, because that also makes me think, yeah. this place just doesn't have superheroes, huh? Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> The pit that everybody abandoned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think of how much good Superman could do just like one day <laughs> in Gotham. It's true. It's true. Yeah, and I think that like yeah, the implication too is that like you know obviously like Batman and Superman haven't met. It is also like like not it's not Superman's year one either, but like mm. he is early in his career. It seems like. He's still gotcha. well-known enough that yeah. you refer to a man of steel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, like, Superman can't just go to Gotham and, like, punch police corruption. You know what I no. mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, he could. Most Metropolis, <laughs> he could try, I guess. <laughs> what do you think Superman would do in the case of corruption? Because he's very black and white, right? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think... I mean, I, I can't imagine what he would be able to do. <laughs> Powerless. <laughs> I think that, Taking yeah... Taking you to court with all my money <laughs> that I don't have. I mean, I, I, to me, like, I feel like he would have to almost lean more into his reporter status, not superhero status, you know. Or I guess identity is really more what Why I mean. Why does that yeah, sound like guess, a comedy? Yeah, he- <laughs> like Clark Kent comes to Gotham City and constantly they try to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what was that? There, there's a meme that I keep seeing where it's like, I want a TV show where Clark Kent is a reporter and the CIA is trying to oh, kill yeah. him and they can't figure it out. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> it would, it would be what happens when like Clark Kent goes to Gotham. Like he writes one expose yeah. on police corruption. It's just like, oh, we gotta get rid of him. Yeah. And it's just like escalating assassins. <laughs> so I'd read it. Yeah, it would work. It really would. As it's, a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I think that I really like um, in this, you know, just uh, Bruce and Gordon's, you know, um, parallel parallel stories. They both get beat up at the same time, don't they, in that beginning part? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think that. I really thought about that. Yeah. I mean, Bruce even gets, what, in a police car with two policemen. They're like, man, this dude's dying. Where do we <laughs> drop the body? <laughs> yeah. And then what? That's at the same time as Gordon was beat up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Gordon gets his like revenge on Flash. Yeah. yeah. Pretty quickly, whereas Bruce's thing is just like escaping and realizing that he needs to become a bat. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I this is definitely one where I I think I have to think about it a little bit more about how much is, like, parallel? Because there's definitely the parallel physical elements like that, both getting beaten up mm-hmm. at a low point. But I don't... You know, Gordon has... I, I really like the fact that Gordon has an affair because it doesn't feel like something you normally do for, like, the good character. Like, they're yeah. always on the right road kind of thing, where it's like, mm-hmm. he's having an affair. This isn't... This isn't the low point at the beginning that he has to get over. This is something that's happening when he's, like, getting more power within the police department. Like, he should be, like, having a good, you know, run. Mm. Right. Yeah, but it's, like, it's so stressful, you know, and he's spending Mm. so much time away from his wife. Gotcha. It's, like, yeah, he also, like, it's pretty much, like, uh, it... It's not directly stated, but it's pretty clear that, like, I don't think that he really wants a kid, you know? He's, like, I mean, he's definitely, like, fearful for his son being in Gotham. And so he's just kind of, like, he's not, like, anti-children all the way. Like, you'd never have children. But, like, he's all, like, this is poorly timed. And Mm -hmm. if I could go back, I would, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, he's, he does say that he prays that that. Is, yeah. How do you say it? That the, the, her, her test comes back. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's like, I kind of wish she wasn't pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is rough. Mm-hmm. Really rough. I, you know, and I'm not gonna say that I like him having an affair, mainly because I'm too distracted by how uh, morally objected I am to that. So I'm just like, Ugh, I hate that you did that, Gordon. Why? I think that's a good reaction. That's fair. You know, yeah. you yeah. probably shouldn't be like, yeah, Gordon, get some. <laughs> but, but but also too, like, um, I can't also look at like Gordon doing that uh, in a vacuum because. To me, like thinking about the fact that, oh, Gordon, you know, is not this all around good guy, to me, just harkens back to a comic that I know we all don't remember, <laughs> which is, um, yeah, I don't even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Great reference. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, man, they made a movie about it. Legion. Is it about Gordon? No. Legacy. Legacy. Almost. Oh, Jupiter's Legacy? Yeah, Jupiter's Legacy. Which in that comic is like, these are real superheroes. Like mm, we can yeah, connect with them. And and what they did was they made every superhero like messed up. 
Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, they're trying to do a Watchmen thing, right? Yeah. I guess, yeah. One of those classic 2000s deconstructions, mm-hmm. uh, trying to emulate Watchmen. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so, like, to me, that, I like, it's hard hard for me to be like, okay, this is a separate thing. Like, there's there's not, nothing else behind me. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, when I say look at it at a vacuum, like, I, without the context of... I think I understand, but you've introduced a lot of pieces that <laughs> kind of make it do, confusing. Okay. So, do you think Gotham City itself would be a context of, like, this city is ruining me so much kind of thing? I mean, so, what, what I'm... Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain what I mean better. To me, I can't say that I enjoy seeing Gordon... Uh, in a doing something wrong because I I can't look at that and enjoy that without being reminded of how other people have portrayed that in in the past in the sense of Jupiter's legacy of Mm. always having, like when they say this is real and gritty, like it is. Okay, okay. I think I understand Mm. what you're saying now. So basically, like you, you feel like it's just a cheap way to make it grittier, rather than actually feeling like it's. Uh, I, I I'm not even saying that. I'm saying that. Okay, actually, so my interpretation of it, and my reception to him doing that is colored by the fact that other people have done something similar. You've seen it so often. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's overplayed feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because to me, I would much rather have people that like I could like look up to, not necessarily somebody like I. There's some aspects where okay, I can relate to you, cool. Mm-hmm. But like when I see you like mess up, that's where I'm like I I just I don't like that so much. I I didn't like him. I mean, I said I loved it, but like obviously, like when I saw it it was actually, like, infuriating. Because mm. I was like, wait a second, that's not your wife. <laughs> it took yeah. me a little moment. Yeah. But I feel like, I I don't know, maybe thinking about what you said, Taylon, it is sort of the simplest, weakest, I don't know, I wouldn't say weakest, but it's the most base level thing of, like, he's messing up, you can do. Like, he's not mm. out there, like, snorting cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Oh man, I just have too much love to give. <laughs> You're a nice person. He's not like mm. I don't know. She's not like a horrible person who's like you should leave your wife. Although mm. she does go if your wife wasn't pregnant, would mm. you like me more? Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, like okay, I will say between this and Jupiter's Legacy, I think this is a better version of that because yeah, that's fair. But maybe it's just because it's Batman characters. Maybe that's just mm. me. Gotcha. But at the same time, it's like. Yeah, he's away from his wife because trying to catch Batman and mm-hmm. is with her a lot. And man, his wife just doesn't understand what it's like to be a cop. But you know who does? That other cop mm-hmm. who's way younger than him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank actually, goodness they have one female cop around to do this. I mean, to me, like, again, it's, it's like, this is a comic. This is not real life. But like, I'm just like, ah, that's such a problem. Like. But it's Come like on, Jupiter's go and get your act together. Was, I think just like Jupiter's Legacy, if I recall, was a slightly older uh, superhero having like a midlife crisis with like a way younger hero who like wanted him to introduce her to oh, other heroes. True. Right. Yeah. And then like he got paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like his family came by to pick up the pieces. Yeah. Like this, I feel, is much better than that because there's okay. less like forced forgiveness Mm -hmm. from the family Mm -hmm. like sarah could leave but doesn't because she's honest and i don't think they've like maybe it depends on how you read it like i don't think they've like actually consummated the relationship they've just kissed at this Mm. point yeah that's what it seems like Mm. i mean to be fair when she is told her husband is cheating she's like five days away from delivery (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's not great. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, I I respect Gordon for at the very least like coming clean. I mm. regardless of whether or not you know 
he was forced to. I like, will also argue that if Gordon didn't have this affair, it would just be, I feel like it would be a little flat where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, man, I'm just such a good guy yeah. in a dark world. Yeah. Oh, my only crime is being good. Mm-hmm. Like, Sarah, do you know how good your husband's being? And Sarah's like, yeah, that's I'm fair. sorry. Yeah, like, I and and yeah, I kind of agree with Shuenta there because it's like, okay, and what problem do you give Gordon if not that one? You know, it's like, is he like you know you don't want him to like like Jake said snort coke. Uh, so to me, like you, the problem is if you give him other things, like man, Gordon keeps shooting too many of our suspects. That's just like normal in Gotham. <laughs> They're like, yeah, Gordon. Yeah. That's- I mean, I I don't know if this has necessarily been done too much, like done to death, but I think to me, like, Gordon, the kind of character that I would want him to be is more of a, like, I am trying to do good here, but, like, I am in a system where doing good is almost impossible. Right. Isn't he a bit of a stickler for the rules kind of person? Mm -hmm. It's a lawful good or something? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... Which is hard when the law kind of sucks, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think I think he definitely like, starts that way and slowly shifts, and not not even a full shift by the end, but mm-hmm. he is yeah. starting to become more like just neutral good or something. Well, like he that. tolerates um, chaotic good of Batman, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I won't do it, but I'll let you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but again, and and to me, like I guess. I also kind of discredit my interpretation because, again, I feel like the what he did wrong was is more egregious to me than the fact that, like, oh, he is messed up. Because I can recognize that, like, what I'm essentially asking for is, in a way, who he is. Like, he is a guy trying to do good, but because of what's going on, like, he did slip. Mm-hmm. But to me, it was like, ugh. Yeah. Slip I thought it was better way. than this. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. I, I really expected when they introduced that, they they briefly have, like, this one drug dealer they're bringing in, and he knows about, he's able to expose directly the corruption within the police department of, like, Flass, and then Flass mm-hmm. would expose the commissioner. Um, they had um, his lawyer, who happens to be a woman, and I expected that to be Essen or somebody who, mm. or, I don't know. I just thought that Essen was going to come out to be, I seduced him kind of thing oh. of like double tricking. Mm. Gotcha. I, I don't know. I feel like that would be a different conundrum yeah. if she was set up by the commissioner to seduce him or something mm. yeah. versus her just being a good person and he's a good person. So they naturally gravitate towards each other. Mm. You're the only person I can trust in the police department, it seems like. Yeah, yeah that would definitely, you know, I, that would definitely make Gordon seem, like, less bad. Like, I mean... But it feels like a cop-out a little bit. Right, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Like, oh, this wouldn't have happened if you weren't... Mm-hmm. If this wasn't your goal. Which, I mean, <laughs> yeah, which isn't the case. Like, even if yeah. you get seduced, it's like, well, don't. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> yeah. But what a good story, huh? It Bringing is. Bringing up it these is. problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are. I, I would say this is a little bit of a, a nitpick, maybe, and also getting into things that we didn't like on accident. When I mean, uh, to me, like, I I don't consider it a things I don't like because it's not like I. It's it's more like me. Like, bringing up some moral. <laughs> yes, like like me just kind of ruminating and like, ah, oh, if this yeah. happened in real life, <laughs> not not. Mm-hmm. Do I like if this for the story? Fictional people <laughs> did this in front of me. <laughs> right. Well, so so to me, I'm like, yeah, I told it's I get it's for the story. It fits. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree. Um. Yeah, Jake, was there anything um, that you liked in particular? Um, I did like the uh, internal monologue for uh, Batman as he's going through his actions, especially mm-hmm. the fight in the burning down slash exploding building. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
That was I like that. All most of the action I did like, you know, even without touching on the art. Uh, action had a good flow to it. Um, characters, obviously, we haven't talked about that for a little bit, but the character. This is where like a lot of like weird kind of standby like facts about Batman kind of crop up where it's like went around the world to train mm-hmm. uh, drinks club soda instead of alcohol all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so I like okay. that as well even though some of that isn't really like about this book oh okay wait yeah. so you're saying that this book isn't the origin of, of him going around the world drinking oh no, this, this book is but oh, like okay. I, I like it in other things but this is mm. where those things come from and yeah, they're okay. not super elaborated on in this even they're just kind of yeah extra details like, that build it yeah like here are like some facts and other people have like kind of elaborated on those mm. and i like those elaborations but this okay. is where it comes from gotcha yeah so this is probably the source of a lot of um yeah like you're saying good ground to work on yeah it was inspiring. It needed elaborating mm. on because it was so interesting of yep. a concept mm-hmm. yep. that was just slightly hinted at in mm-hmm. this story. Although one thing I will say, which is definitely a nitpick, when like Batman is using darts to make people unconscious, he just says he uses anaconda venom. And as far as I am aware, <laughs> anacondas are not venomous. <laughs> There's a reason why they're so big and wrap around you so many times. <laughs> Yeah. They're going to squeeze you to death. Right? So, like, I, okay. I can't blame Frank Miller too much for that one. You can't just Google, hey, are anacondas venomous? <laughs> He's like, snakes? Put in the script. What do people know about snakes? There's one snake, yeah. it's an anaconda. <laughs> yeah, and they're not in the south, so they're not going to do rattlesnake venom. Mm. But they could. S- they could. There's not anacondas native to Gotham. Yeah, I know that, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like... Rattlesnake is, like, very specifically, like, that connotates, like, a more... Venomous? No, not more venomous, but more of, like, a southern oh, um, okay. America. Gotcha. Okay, I guess I could see that. I thought it was just, like, okay, I have to have a name that is... Like, I can't be Rattlesnake because it's too American. It needs to be something that is, like, foreign mm-hmm. sounding. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay. D- like, you oh. know, to, like, um, reinforce the idea is, like, this is something that is... That he picked up on his uh, okay. you know, vacation around the do, world training. Gotcha. Do yeah. we make our tranquilizers out of venom? Don't those normally kill people? No. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's another problem <laughs> too. <laughs> venom, venom. Not to mention <laughs> this other thing. <laughs> Using pufferfish like venom. Super bad for you. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly enough. I think getting knocked out. Well, Anything no, that knocks you out probably isn't doing great things to your like, body. If it was, if it was a neurotoxic venom it i guess you could like kind of hand wave that away as yes it lowers like the heart rate to make them pass out etc mm. but if like if it was a necrotizing venom you wouldn't do that necessarily yeah. no no jake yeah. like all they all he did was you know put a little poison and then you know put a little venom in there put a little water in there mix it up it's only 85 percent poison. i think he should have done <laughs> bat <not> venom <laughs> he's bat that's so heaven him well, anacondas don't have venom either. <laughs> it's more on brand. He's like special bat venom. That's fair. Like, bats have rabies. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have this scene where they all have to get bat shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was really great. Selena there just annoyed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I will say, like, um, I don't know if this, this isn't like some I liked or disliked. It's just something I noticed. It was like Batman Begins took a lot from this book. Like, like I, I just think, well, I guess, to be fair, I am only thinking of two aspects, so, <laughs> to be yeah, fair. Yeah, the Sonic Bat thing. Yes. And then and the ending with the Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I Wait. just feel like that's a normal thing in Batman, where they always <laughs> got a hint about the Joker. <laughs> it also oh, went- yeah. What is the first when in doubt thing? and you're writing the a story Sonic, that doesn't like the have Sonic, a joke. Using oh. Sonic to okay, call okay. the bats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the bat signal. Oh, also, also <laughs> Flash. The, bat the other bat signal. Yeah. The one from my bat. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they did name drop Flash in Batman <laughs> Begins. Well, no, he but was I like mean, actually a character in there. What? Oh, yeah, he was the fat guy. Yeah. Is he, what, who? Flash. Flash. 
Wasn't Batman Begins? The police officer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But he was a very different character, which mm. is interesting. I mean, he was still a bully, but, you know, not like, I'm tough. Yeah, bullied <laughs> that poor falafel salesman. <laughs> <laughs> I never remember Batman Begins. I like. I have no. Didn't didn't you say you keep falling asleep? And yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you could be talking about, about any Batman this movie. Is... They really need to differentiate the names better. What do you mean? We got Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> what do you mean? And the, the Batman. And the Batman. <laughs> 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 Okay, I will say last thing that I think I like about it is um, this happened in that one futuristic Batman one we read that like just how much of Batman gets cornered and it feels real Mm. that he's being cornered. Mm. Like he doesn't even have his belt anymore. What's he going to do to get out of this? He's like, "Uh, I have one thing I could do. I could call some animals. Mm. Mm. Was that Batman year 100? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. In that one, there, I felt like there was a lot of, like, how the heck is Batman going to get out of this? Like, these people have, like, futuristic weapons. But in this, even just, like, Batman has a gun to him at one point by, I think, Essen or something. Yeah. And just, I don't know. It just feels more realistic in some ways. Uh, it's not just flashy kick moves and he gets out of mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. Mm-hmm. Also, in reference to, to Batman Year 100, when I picked that book, I definitely thought that we were going to read this book sooner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant you got them mixed up. No, no. <laughs> I knew that they were different. I just was all like, oh, that might be an interesting comparison. And now I'm like, I hardly remember that book. Oh, bummer. <laughs> and I didn't even read it. <laughs> I remember it. I mean, of the two year books that we've read about Batman. This is definitely the better one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? There's okay. good, like, this, every side character has, like, good characterization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, even though this doesn't have, like... Because if I recall correctly, one of our big problems with Batman Year 100 was that, like, the big problem just kind of, like, shows up near the end and gets resolved at the end. Hacking. And We have yeah, a super <laughs> virus that's also digital that's going to kill us all. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then this, like... <laughs> This book, which I don't think would work in a lot of books, doesn't really have, like, a central villain. It's, Fair. like, the yeah. villain is, so it's, like, how bad Gotham is. Yeah. And obviously you can't solve that by merit of there are still Batman comics <laughs> coming out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, another but, thing. Do you want to go for it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like, this, this book, like, has a better ending even though just like kind of ends yeah it's still a better ending than oh yeah the main bad guy we introduced in the last issue (laughs) also yeah like explodes Mm. falls off a bridge any of those like non-committal like we need to get rid of this villain but we can't have batman kill them endings it's definitely like they have the two parallel stories and then they come they you know they keep kind of crisscrossing a little bit like bruce wayne meeting with gordon gordon calling the swiss alps to try to find bruce wayne and then at the end him saving the baby because they Mm -hmm. collide i mean and they even crisscross like just passing on the street too because he was driving the like when he escaped from the police oh yes Mm -hmm. he was driving the vehicle that gordon dodged Man, that crazy guy. Mm. I do love the passerbyers. Don't you know what rich people take? Okay, <laughs> I saw it in a documentary. <laughs> um, another thing that um, Batman Year 100 had that probably came from this, probably was inspired by this, was Flash's whole thing about being like how superhuman and it's not human what mm. Batman is. I mm. love that, where it's mm. like, you know, shot right through him. It's very obvious he's just shooting his cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what? Something something flew from the creature's hand. I remember noticing it had claws, had little dart things. They paralyzed the felons. And the other police officers are like, are like what? Little dart things? <laughs> Just all making fun of him, and he's, like, turning red. But it's such a un, unnatural experience to him that he's, like, questioning reality, I guess. Yeah, mm. yeah I really like that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and I think, you know, it's what's been said already, but, like, yeah, everybody has, like, really, you know, good and unique characterization. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the, even the commissioner, you know, like, even if he is, like, just a bad dude, you know, <laughs> it's, like, still, it's, like, we get good examples of, like, how he's bad oh, and, nice. you know, like, how he's um, also, like, a hypocrite, you know? He's all, like... Oh, I don't care if Batman's running around, you know, yes. like whatever. And, and then, then it interrupts his party. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, all right. Yeah. I'm done with this guy. <laughs> no excuses, Gordon. That vigilante goes under <laughs> instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it's I think it's literally like between two pages where it's like, Batman, but everybody loves what he's doing. You know, people on the street love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, he has a Mickey Mouse thing on his collar. Yeah, I noticed that actually um, just like today there was also a panel where somebody picks up a Mickey Mouse uh, phone mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. how'd they get that passed? And <laughs> interesting little, like I, I now it feels like it's important. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might really just be characterization. Yeah. Because doesn't Selena... What's that thing she steals from the person? Oh, memorabilia. That's right. The commissioner is a big. Uh, he ha- he has yeah. pop culture memorabilia. She's that's just like really tearing apart though. It, it was like worth like thirty six million or something. Yeah. Like that. No, it's like what forty thousand. Forty thousand. Oh, well, yeah. Very yeah. I mean, if the commissioner, <laughs> <laughs> if I had forty million dollars worth of memorabilia, I better be a billionaire. <laughs> I don't think you're picking that up on, like, even a corrupt cop's like, <laughs> <business> salary. <laughs> yeah. Um, which still, like, I mean, I understand that maybe it's, like, a little too, like, hot to sell immediately. But I'm like, Selena, you're kind of like, this is worthless, you know? And I'm like, it's not worthless. Still sell it. Like, mm. I don't yeah. know. The problem is it's incredibly distinct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or jewels. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, all this pop memorabilia. That you stole from the person who collected pop memorabilia that we all saw on the news. Mm. I mean, if it's that expensive, it's probably like set of 100 kind of thing. Like, there's only 100 yeah. of these that have existed. Yeah, I guess so. I'm just all like, maybe you could sit on it long enough, but... I think you'd have to go somewhere else, frankly. Yeah, or, or go somewhere else, yeah. Mm, Which gotcha. I don't think she has the means to do at this point. Okay, all she right. She spent all fine, her money on that fine. suit. <laughs> I know, it's fun to nitpick apart the little details like that, where it's like, it all is believable towards a certain narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, I mean, I know that there are other things that I probably liked, but there's nothing that's really coming to mind. Like Jake said, uh, with the action, I really liked how um, it flowed, but that does kind of also get into the art. I mean, yeah, personally, it's, hard to pick out things from this narrative since they all kind of work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very cohesive. Mm-hmm. Um. So as far as things I didn't like, or like all of us. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, just you. <laughs> me show. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I would say... It is a little bit hard for me to arrange in my mind. If I had the book closed, if I had to think this happens, then because of that, this happens. That's fair. I I wonder if it just means I need more time to digest it. I don't know if it's necessarily a backdrop of it. Because, you know, like even we were talking about, does he call Batman at the Swiss Alps before he meets him? It's Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, I guess he'd have to or else he'd know what Batman would sound like. Batman, (laughs) Bruce Wayne. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Calling Batman. Mm-hmm. Persuades, I guess. Do Do you think that's just the nature <laughs> of it being kind of like, um, like through journal entries, like um, it was one it, day, then it could happen like two weeks later, or, you know? Whatever. Well, that's the thing, right? Like time mm-hmm. skips are just constant in this. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. now, and then it's different, then it's next scene is later, later. Which, mm-hmm. to be fair, in other stories, it's like. Yeah, obviously this is later, but is it the same day? Is it the next mm-hmm. day? In this, they very clearly tell you, but that's still kind of hard to keep track of. You're just like, mm-hmm. okay, seven days have passed. Yeah. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. It's been a little bit. Gotcha. Like, 
um, you know, Gordon being at the police department. I don't remember. It takes like probably a week or two for them to be like, Gordon's not working out. He mm-hmm. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, like the first time that I got caught up on that time skip was when Flass went to the commissioner and was like, we're having a problem with Gordon. Mm-hmm. We want him taken care of. And uh, the commissioner's like, uh, no, wait till I leave. Two wait, weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks. And then the next panel is two weeks later. Yeah, yeah. So and you're like, wait, okay. That's a huge time. To be like, fair to it, it kind of makes it feel like there's no no filler. You know, yeah. there's, we're not going to show some random filler scene to get you the sense that time has passed. But still, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is like, especially with the one part where um, Sarah, you know, at the beginning of the page, they have her being told that she's like, yes, I know what's going on between my husband and that other police officer. And then I think there's this a panel, and then there's another panel of other things happening. And the panel at the very bottom of the page is, you know, M- Mr. Gordon or whatever, your son has been delivered. And it's mm. like, man, it really is just bam, bam, bam mm. within mm. one page. But I-, I think for the most part, most of the time that works to its advantage as far as pacing. But I can see what you mean where it's mm. like there's so many time skips. There's so many different things happening. This happens. Then it immediately... You know, this, mm-hmm. the anticipation that something bad is going to happen is presented in that scene like you were talking mm-hmm. about. And it almost immediately happens. Yeah. So it's kind of too quick of a payoff, maybe. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what do we do? Do we put in more Bruce scenes? Bruce <laughs> kicking trees. <laughs> I can't believe he can just kick that tree. Yeah. That man would just kill someone else. <laughs> yeah. To kick, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, uh, just to focus on that little part for a second, you know, that would be like uh, kind of setting the groundwork for, yeah, right now he's just pretty much facing like people and sometimes they will eventually be in costumes. Like right now they're just actually people that he's mm. facing. <laughs> yeah. um, but eventually, eventually he'll also face metahumans. They will mm. be a lot stronger. Mm. Um, so I guess, you know, that kind of like, you know, you, you have to also <laughs> lay that groundwork yes. where, <laughs> for his origin. where He's like, he's that strong. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's some parts like when he's sneaking into the mansion for the party of the commissioner's party and all those rich people. And, like, some of it, yeah, the pacing is too much. Uh, You kind of see Batman there next to one of the cars. I totally missed that, to be fair. And I was like, who is this? Who is this? And you're kind of being guided through by, like, very brief narration, which is frankly is in, like, a cursive font, which, (laughs) not my strong suit. Just just skip all of it. (laughs) Skip all of it. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's an A. That's an O. Yeah. Now, th- in this comic, the cursive isn't so bad, but uh, in Batman War Games, which is much later than the story, uh, in from the story, but like, um, spoiler does journal entries in cursive, and I I had a hard time being like, is that what is that letter? <laughs> And so I would like read ahead mm. and then it would like naturally come to me. And I was like, oh, so that letter was actually this. Okay. What yeah. is this word, Taylon? Oh, <laughs> this is a test. So many cops around? Yes. Lucky for her, there yes. were so many cops around. But yeah. yes, context helps. Mm. But if yeah. you just saw that, That's where fair. it like collides Wait, with. It collides with the, because they didn't leave enough room. So oh, okay, right. Just that yeah. single word there. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Yeah, that is hard to read. I agree. Yeah. I was, at first, I thought you were pointing at the word for above it. Am I <laughs> complaining about the letter? Possibly. Possibly not. Yeah. <laughs> they did good and all the other stuff. It's it's interesting, the bold faces, like, especially when that little kid talks. Yeah. She where she does. Selena. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering the emphasis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's intentional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't too distracting. I mean, I kind of realized what it meant. It was still a little odd. It was, yeah. I'm like, how does she talk? Like, what? And why does she talk that way? Mm-hmm. I guess, mm-hmm. you know? And I think it's just to uh, evoke that she's a lot younger than Selena is. Oh, that's fair. 
Yeah, she emphasizes weird little parts. Explosions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All the little, like, quips people have are so... <laughs> you know, maybe Brandon's corner to jaywalker when she hears that the building is being blown up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that part. Yeah. But... Yeah, um, it, it's, it's weird that the, like, excessive force cop has gotten so famous that, like, even, like, sex workers know that, like... The, the first name <laughs> of the cop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a little odd. I'm sure they hear in the distance constantly, Brandon. <laughs> Just over the gunshots and explosions. Yeah. I will say, yeah, there's, there's certain sections. I don't know if this is necessarily the art or just, like we were saying, kind of the pacing where I'm like, what is going on? Like, this portion where Batman is walking up the stairs he's trying to get to the roof and then so you see what i mean where he's like there and then they drop something and then so i guess the explosion happened on the roof but the rest of the building yeah because it's affected. happening in this panel where he's covering from the explosion yeah it's still it's a little weird because then he's down there and then he's i don't know there's not enough I don't know. This probably gets into background, but there's like not enough context. I feel. Yeah. And just like, and then there's a door there. I don't know. And then also the bridge scene. I got so confused with the bridge scene. I'm like, baby saved. Uh, yeah, I get that. <laughs> but I was also like, did I don't know. I had trouble with this part where Gordon is fighting the guy who's holding the baby, and then yeah. I didn't have as much trouble, but I will agree that, yeah, I w- actually didn't notice um, that Bruce was the motorcyclist originally, and oh. then I, I had to go back, and I was all like, oh, wait, gotcha. how, did, how did Bruce get here? Where is he? <laughs> gotcha. Like, who is this guy, and what, what does that mean? You know? Mm-hmm. And then, so, so, yeah, the motorcycle, he shoots the guy on the motorcycle, Gordon takes Bruce's motorcycle, mm-hmm. right, runs yeah. up, <laughs> and then Bruce is telling, you know, Barbara Gordon's wife. Yeah, and I think it also confused me that this is where the bicycle yes. gets introduced, and it's just some random guy. I was like, mm. wait, is this one of the criminals? Why does he have a bicycle? <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there's there's a lot of little moving parts, and sometimes mm. it gets a little confusing. Yeah. I will say, like, I had confusion. Um, so basically, what happened was I read like half of the book last week. <laughs> And then we didn't have the show last week, so then I just reread the whole book this week. And so rereading the book, I realized that there was distinction between the curse of writing and the regular script. So I was like, oh, so this is Gordon speaking, oh. and this the is major Bruce. Component. Yeah. 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 I was, was like, that's... I see the difference now. Okay. <laughs> you mean Bruce wasn't monologuing over Gordon <laughs> being a police officer? <laughs> Would say that's, yeah, it is a very interesting thing, and I don't think most people would be able to pull it off, the mm. split between two characters like that, mm. and only differentiating it mostly through, like, mm. their weird little narrations. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I you hate narration normally, and I do feel like in some cases here, it's, because it's cut between so many different parts. Maybe it's pills, maybe it's a heart attack. You know, they're just, mm. it, so much of the statements are cut apart. That mm, okay. have to, uh, 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 to put it all together, which gotcha. I mean, I guess it kind of mimics how you think, mm. you know, small little statements. Mm-hmm. I I was thinking in more of the, the beginning of the book was more of an issue. I guess I was thinking, like, is this telling instead of showing? Like, that's what my question is always when it's like narration rather than dialogue within mm. the panel. I, I do feel like a lot of the time, because I, I read this very fast, to be fair, a lot of time was spent just reading it, going next page, reading it, it like mm-hmm. n- getting less time to focus on what's going on in the panel versus gotcha. what they're saying. Mm-hmm. I still got the uh, the gist of the story. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely, it's a little bit hard to put all the events in the right place because... Man, Selena doesn't get her like cat suit till way later, till after like Batman uses his bat horde or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So it's like how much of the book is left before she starts being yeah, like 
there's this much of the book left before she gets, yeah. mm-hmm. decides to change professions to mm-hmm. Catwoman. Mm-hmm. I so this is just kind of kind of random, but um, in the dinner scene, like we get, I think that's the first time we get introduced to a character called the Roman. Yes, and I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's Falcone or Falcone. I don't know how you you pronounce his name. Like Carmine Falcone. Yeah, because that's a. I want to say it's one of the like, kind of like main mobster families. Mm-hmm. Is Roman because that's a character who shows up in. Um, I know the Long Halloween for sure. Yeah. I think it, I think it's yeah I think it is Falcone. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Okay. It can't be. There's another. Okay, I'm probably thinking of the Batman movie too well, much, where I'm like, this other guy looks more like Falcone. Mm. <laughs> well, and and I think also in this book, they kind of address him by the Roman and also Falcone. Well, at the, Falcone party, at the party, someone is said to be yeah. Falcone. Yeah. Um, but see, like, when they called him the Roman, I, I honestly thought it was Roman Sionis. And I was like, so to me, that's... When I think of Roman, I think of him first. Yeah, that's Black Mask. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that is a little confusing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't think that Black Mask was created. Yet. I don't mm-hmm. think that's Fal. I don't think Roman and Falcone are same because this is Falcone. This is who they refer to. This guy with white hair. Mm-hmm. They show him later tied up. But then mm-hmm. who is the other guy who's with his? Okay, it yeah. is him. It is him. Okay, yeah. I thought he had dark hair. Mm. Okay, you're right. Gotcha. You are right. Gotcha. I just thought they were presenting other mm. mobster yeah. families. Mm. Gotcha. Man, Falcone seems really weak now. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just gets like, he's like my nephew or whoever. Yeah, my nephew, you've got a <laughs> switchblade. Protect me. Well, we're both mm-hmm. wearing bath towels. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was like, when, when they had that scene with um, Falcone and his nephew, um, I was like, oh, you know, oh, he's a cool, like, cool uncle. Like, you know, he's totally fine. And then he calls him his nephew an idiot and, like, hits him in the head. I'm like, yeah, oh, man, this is going dark real fast. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like, his nephew is supposed to be, like, the muscle. And yeah, not... he's like, I need to be told their names. Mm-hmm. Mother said you're having trouble. Yeah. Because, like, to me, it was like, oh, so his nephew's, like, loyal and, and like, I respect you. Like, oh, you're well, the greatest kind of in Well, you notice how Falcone talks to, like, his other friends at the party mm-hmm. where he's like, yeah, Harvey Dent's being a problem. And I, he's talking, like, normally. Mm-hmm. With his, like, nephew, he's like... Little Johnny, you are a man now, a strong man. Mm. <laughs> it's like okay, very gotcha. short sentences. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I didn't, I didn't connect that. that I don't sense. know. Maybe he's just being regular villainous, mm. <laughs> talking cryptically. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot for me that I really disliked. Um, in this book Mm. like even yeah some of the um like i can i can understand and look past some of the uh confusing you know choices i don't think i would normally like are made to work for Mm. the most part in this story yeah like so i think most of the things i would say is like drawbacks could also technically be positives (laughs) gotcha and and most of what I dislike, like I like this book a lot, and so most of what I dislike is just like the art is not really like my style. Like, so you want to get into the art? Uh, Jake, did you have anything? <laughs> um, the only thing I would say, and it's a flip side of kind of the thing I liked, where it's like I feel like some creators now don't try to do different things with Batman because they measure it up to the stuff that was started here. Mm. And so now like 40 ish years <laughs> on, like we're yeah. still seeing the same things used in Batman's history. It's like, it gets kind of old. Like I don't mm. feel like people are as, as venturous as they could have been like before this comic. So it's double edged sword. It's like, yes, this book started a lot of interesting things that I'd like to see when they're referenced, but 
some of them are referenced too often and it feels like people aren't as creative. Yeah, they keep going back to this even though, like you were saying, it's kind of fuzzy can. Gotcha. And, I mean, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a pushback on that, but, like, to me, um, you know, people do have a general idea of, like, who Batman is. And so, to me, it's like, well, how do we be creative while also not completely, like, making Batman totally different? And, like, and I don't know if that's a common problem, but, like, I can see that as, like, for me. I I don't know. It's probably, I mean, I feel like, we, I feel like you acknowledge this, but it's obviously kind of not the fault of this book that other people are copying it kind of blindly. <laughs> yeah, that's, no. yeah. that's, that's kind of the other thing, too, is, like, sometimes, like, if it's done well, I don't mind it, but if it's, like, if you're copying the the idea without understanding, like, why it was good in the book, Mm. Then that's kind of like yeah. there was just a panel um, in a new Batman run uh, where they're bringing back uh, Batman of Zer N Ah, mm. mm-hmm. and it's like man, we don't know how it is because it was like it's the last page of this comic, but it's like man, if you just like grab stuff that seems cool and don't understand why it was like used okay. at the time, it's it's gonna mm-hmm. like kind of ruin your book and maybe the old book mm-hmm. in comparison. What are you talking about? Aesthetic is everything. <laughs> I guess it does look very cool. Well, it looks dumb, but that's why it's cool. <laughs> we'll come up with the reason later. All right, there you go. Yeah. That is also like the other problem with fun comics. It's like, put in a cool thing. We'll figure out why it's there later. <laughs> yeah. I will say um, Catwoman feeds her cats very irresponsibly. Irresponsibly? Yeah. Okay. Just I mean, of, she has literally dozens. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> do you say, wait, did you say responsibly? No, irresponsibly. She's, She's just kind of like, just pours it out, like, <laughs> whenever they're asking. One of those cats is really fat. Yeah. The and they're all, like, pretty much fighting. eating from the same place. Like, <laughs> also, her apartment has to smell. I mean, yes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not a great apartment. <laughs> But it's Gotham, so like, uh. yeah. Mm-hmm. It masked the smell of the dead bodies outside. <laughs> oh yeah, that would, that would be nice, I suppose. Uh, you have a choice oh, in Gotham. Man. Okay, so art-wise, you said yeah. your take on it, Taylon. Yeah. Well, so to me, it's more just like, I I guess I I give it leeway because it's like, okay, this is an older comic, and so. The style is. They just didn't know how to do art back then. Basically, basically oh I guess. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Well, Taylor. No, no it, I, I think mean, to you me, can it's guess like, what I feel about it. <laughs> to me, I'm just like, you know, it. To me, like the designs are simpler, like, and I guess like the art plus costume design designs are simpler. Like, I'm okay with that, knowing that this is older. If this was in a newer comic, I'd be like, ah, really, try better. Ah. Okay. Well, Taylor. <laughs> I just, like, I mean, I'm still hung up on you saying this just because it's, like, older. I, I like, mean, I was joking, but I do yeah, think I like, feel that way a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so no, Taylor, I, I, do you, like, do you art is, like, kind of, like, a linear thing where it's just, like, more time makes the yes. art better yes. as you go on? Absolutely. Okay, to be fair, I do think, like... I don't know. It does feel like the level for professional comics in the past was a little lower <laughs> at well, times. Well, it depends because, like, Golden Age comics actually had very good art, and, like, it kind of gets a rap for having bad art, but that's, like, just, like... I mean, the draftsmanship like, is there, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and then basically when the industry kind of bottomed out, um, they hired less quality artists because the higher quality artists got better jobs. Mm. <laughs> See, the way that I look at it as is, you know, as things go on, things progress. You can look back <laughs> in the past and say, okay, this art isn't as great. That's fine because they but didn't have much to work with. That's fine. Fine. You're right. Your grandparents were worse at things because they're older than you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, it's, 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 it's like 
like take the idea of a car. It's like a car today is better than a car was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just a fact. They're more yeah. comfortable. They're more efficient. They're yeah. they're literally better in every way. Yeah. But like something subjective as like quality of art. That's or fair. like like or like even like take art away. It's like creative pursuits. Communication like, in general. Like books are not better now than they were 50 years ago. Music is not better now than it was 50 years ago, other than, gotcha. like, higher fidelity, possibly. Mm -hmm. Like, the mediums but that's may not improve, even music. But like, <laughs> the, the quality of the subject does not improve. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say, like, your expectations have changed. Like, people back then, you know, might have expected something to be communicated to them differently mm -hmm. than versus now. Just, like, gotcha. doesn't yeah. mean it's worse or better, necessarily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking about things. This, this art like conversation is like, how do we convince Taylan he's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Taylan, yeah. so how do you feel about the art, Cody? Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I felt like, you know, as I alluded to earlier, like it had just like a really like natural flow a lot of times. I really liked what they did with the coloring. Um, I thought like, you know, the... Uh, more like, I mean, I guess you could say like simple uh, line work, you know, I think that it like, it worked with the story, you know, it's supposed to be like a, you know, an early Batman kind of thing, you know, and I feel like that. Yeah, the costumes aren't complicated. Yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, I feel like that all like really worked uh, well together. It reminded me a lot of David Aja's uh, Hawkeye. Um, yes. You know, obviously, like, that was a little bit more experimental um, in With some... With the simplification, yeah. yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm always a fan of, you know, using, you know, uh, as little as possible in order to um, achieve the idea. Gotcha. I, I will say I am I am swayed by what you just said about you know this is an early Batman, so to me I'm like okay yeah I get like in terms of you know Batman his costume might not be like all decked out because he didn't he's like I don't know what I need right now right yeah so, like the I, fact that you get it gets batterings in the first year is actually kind of impressive <laughs> it's like <laughs> you just had some boomerangs laying around. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I mean, <laughs> obviously, um, I like it. I, I mean, I feel like it's always like Taylor's like, I don't like this. I'm like, well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> always be the opposite. Um, it's just it tends to be a sign of better technical proficiency if you can say le more with less. You know, the simpler you can go, like. Everything okay. showing that they're walking using just those like simple lines Ooh, with the yeah. legs. It's I just never like, noticed that, but that's a good uh, point. Like so much of the black spots are like very careful, which is why when it doesn't work, it kind of stands out. Like that one part where Batman is sneaking into the party, he's really not illuminated properly mm -hmm. in that scene, which I guess is kind of the point. He's hidden, but right. I missed him. I was <laughs> yeah. like, I yeah. didn't realize Batman was present. Mm -hmm. You need like the moon to be shining in the corner and then him Just, to like, be illuminated more. Every single part of it where like, you know, her face is tilting down, like the different angles of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like shown with so many, like very little lines. And I love it to death. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And Even the colors. The colors are pretty good. Like, the colors, I think the colors were better in the beginning. I feel like they get a little bit kind of boring towards the end because it is a little bit duller scenes. Yeah. But, like, when he's in the East End area, that, I was like, yes, it's gorgeous. Mm. All the signs, just too many signs, you know, crowding mm. you in. Red light district, technically. Uh, yeah. Getting to do red light. Uh, mm -hmm like that I'm like yes yeah uh. the yeah the red light like in shadow on the rest of his and, face and the majority of the backgrounds like even when they're fighting here I'm like the lines on his back I'm like that's gorgeous yeah Which, I'm very <laughs> artist <laughs> to <me>. like, <laughs> I love the lines no it's really good oh actually go back a page real quick like mm. 
the the blue light also on like here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish that, that right now I wish that we had a visual component to our show. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it has a lot of really good panels. Maybe you should go read the book. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Um yeah, I will say having read both uh physical and digital recommend physical. It's I think it's better. Yeah, seeing it physically right now, I'm like, dang, I wish I read it physical. <laughs> it's like, I, I I really enjoyed like it, but. It's underrated. It's like how much that just, um, like, reading it digitally, you have to worry about how much, like, your phone brightness is, because that will affect how much you can see. Mm. Don't really have to worry about that if you just have the, mm. as, long as, okay, as long as it is physically bright enough in whatever room you're in to mm. read the book. <laughs> you're seeing it pretty much as intended. Mm -hmm. And and I will say, Shuinta made a comment earlier about uh, similarities that are you know between Batman and James Gordon. Like, um, and are you talking so about it, Hawkeye? No. Okay. Ba Batman and Gordon. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Because so, you were you were talking about how they got beat up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like that reading it on the phone like is panel by panel. Mm -hmm. You don't get that comparison as easily mm. you know? yeah you can really get a sense of like when like this page this happens and then the next mm. page it happens yeah I think just like s poses like that are really hard to show the impact and you see like you know the black line of the silhouette of his other side to mm -hmm. stand out really clearly the danger it's, oh love it yeah. love it to death I, I don't know. Sometimes it was a little too simple at parts, but I don't know. For the most part, I really mm -hmm. like the simplicity. Like, you can't... It's kind of hard to be, like, simple and then not simple at some parts. You mm -hmm. got to keep consistency, mm -hmm. to be fair. Yeah. No, yeah. I... <laughs> face, there's my favorite. Oh, Selena's yeah. mad face at being <laughs> given a uh, rabies shot. I don't think I noticed that with the narration. Mm -hmm. I was no, just... I I just figured that's what I mean. People. The narration sometimes gets in the way. Yeah. But yeah, Selena and the little kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say um, I also liked, you know, sometimes switching between like black and white and color. It's kind of mm. cool too. I like the art. That's for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, art's good. I would agree with that. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I don't know which I prefer because the um, Long Halloween also tries to do the art with this, but there's like a touch more detail because there are more characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure which I prefer because it's been so long since I read Long Halloween. So yeah, I'd have to true. read it like right after this to be mm -hmm. sure. No, T Tim Sale's art is also really good. And that's who does Long Halloween. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I would have to look at it right after, but I think that I would prefer this one most, but not to put down Tim Sale's art. Mm -hmm. So th this was something that I I'm just now seeing, but like being reminded of when Batman's on top of that dude and he's like shocked and his eyes are just all red. <laughs> I'm like, that, that looks a little weird to me. I don't know why Gordon's eyes are red <laughs> yeah. when I tell him. Yeah, I didn't know why. Either. I I thought they're probably trying to do bloodshot, but they should have yeah. just done little lines yeah. in his eyes. And yeah. I'm just like, is he high? Yeah, <laughs> that's because uh, that, well, that yeah, makes sense did. for him. Yeah, but yeah, for for Gordon, especially right after seeing that. Well, I'm, well, to be fair, in this portion, when it's the guy, he's on top of the Batman's on top of the drug dealer. The theme of that scene is kind of red, so a lot of mm. things are red. So mm. I was like, okay, mm. maybe, but yeah. it's still weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say, like, I guess jo Gordon would mm. be more like, you know, tired. Like, yeah, yeah, well, I was saying bloodshot yeah. kind of eyes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Why does he have a clown picture on his wall? I never noticed. That. I didn't notice that. I mean, I guess memorabilia thing again yeah. of like famous picture of clown. Mm. I, I love this little panel of flask being like, I'm not going to answer. Yeah, it's no so comment. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, I don't know how we do the, would you read more 
in this context? Like, I guess, you know, so there's, of course, the creators. There's Frank Miller and uh, David Mazzuchelli. Um, Mm -hmm. And then there's also, as we mentioned, there are sequel series. Um, I don't think that they are written or drawn by the same people, though. Um, and I, it's a whole package for me. You got to have that art. I I will say, like, if there was a sequel series, I feel like unless they got what I would consider, like, really great art, like... I wouldn't like it, mm. even if it was like somebody different. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I feel like I feel like I much prefer consistency. Mm. You know what I mean? So to me, I'm like I don't know. I'm not really into it. I wouldn't be into that so much because it's different. Art. Yeah. Oh, well. Also, I don't know. Thinking about it with Batman, like this is about Batman. You know, his first year kind of learning how to fill this role and help Mm -hmm. his city. And once he's figured it out, it's kind of like, what are we going to talk about now? Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's more about world building, I think, probably, like filling out the other characters. But Yeah, Yeah, I don't don't think I'd care too much. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I'm thinking about it now. I'm just like, hmm. I like what this is. Stuff we've done. Well, at that time, I'm sure they hadn't done it before, but for us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah, and and you're talking about um, uh, how this was after um, Crisis on Infinite Earths. I didn't get that context, like, mm-hmm. so that yeah. was interesting. The the edition I read uh, basically had like a a pretty good um, uh, forward introduction, mm-hmm. and I By think Dennis O'Neill. Yeah, I had Denny mm. O'Neill, and then there was also an afterward, I think, oh, okay. um, too. Because the, the forward, forward only mentioned that they, DC was at a phase where they were looking to revamp their characters. Mm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, yeah, I think I'm kind of willing to maybe look into, like, Batman Year 2 or Year 3. Um, oh, there is a Year 2? Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm like... There has to be. Yeah, 99% you, you, sure. You, you mentioned year three, and I just right. assumed that, oh, that oh. was a sequel. Nobody cares about what happened in year two. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing interesting. Well, no, no. So it goes Batman year one, the Batman, and then Batman year three. No. Because what? the Batman is the second year of Batman. <laughs> there you go. But also... That's that, a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to be fair. <laughs> that is... Uh, anyway. Yes, it's his second year, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, I, I'd kind of be interested just for, for comparative reasons more than, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. I'm really interested to see more. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, as far as Frank Miller, uh, he has some hits and he has some misses and I kind <laughs> of already know about them. <laughs> well, so I, I guess to me, like, um, based on the forward, I was definitely interested in reading, like, his uh, Daredevil run, because that was apparently, like, right before this. Yeah, yeah, and we mm-hmm. read um, that one issue that is part, is oh, the really? end of his oh, okay. run. Gotcha. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so what if, same team, what, uh, would you read another Heroes year one story? Hmm. Hmm. Superman. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, potentially. Yeah. I mean, it, I just, I would, I would. To me, like, I'm just like, ah, oh, but what if it's just not going to be as good? <laughs> this is the thing. It probably won't. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. Yeah, it won't live up to the hype, but I'll but check it out. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting enough, at least. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm just trying to think of like who would you give, like, especially in DC, like the other year one treatment. Because yeah. it's also oh, yeah, like DC. <laughs> about. <laughs> about Gotham, this book. Mm, mm-hmm. So it's like I'm trying to think of like, I mean, who else Flash? has like the kind of story that that would like a year one story like this would help. Yeah, I mean, I would think the Flash, maybe. Mm. Okay, I could kind of see that. Yeah, we need to read some compelling comics of that guy. 
Wait, That's what? just a man who's fast, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, oh, you, oh, you're saying for the show. Yeah. I thought you just like. <laughs> oh, you. We need to read more comics. Oh, we okay. need to read some gotcha. compelling comics of that guy because gotcha. I have never been sold on him. I, I, I will say, like, you know, I definitely would prefer more. Like, I don't, I don't know of a specific adaptation. Does that mean that we're just this? gonna get like a gritty Flash though? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, uh, might, it might be. It that. wasn't fast enough. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like the Flash. At least the interpretation that I don't know if it's been necessarily done before, but I'm sure it has because I think of it. Um, but it's like where it's not just that he like runs fast, but he's like smart. Like he 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 thinks about how he's going to uh, approach these scenarios. Like he uses science. Right. Like that's that's the kind of like I would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, he's just Sonic. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. Or and a time traveler. Mm. Exotic time travels. I guess. Yeah. I guess too. Like, <laughs> to be fair, the the Flash does touch on the science of it. Yeah. So that's also, where I got it. The yeah. Science of what? His fastness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like so, the Flash TV show. Mm. Okay. Wait. So. In most contexts, how does the Flash get his powers? Through science? Uh, it's struck, sort of. Struck by lightning. Pseudoscience. Chemical, chemicals <laughs> splashed on him at the same time. Pseudoscience. <laughs> it, it's comic book science. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's comic book smart, yeah. Although... It's like... It's like anacondas having venom. It's yeah, sure, mm -hmm. in the DC universe. It, if you want more of a scientific approach to getting the Flash's power, just you know, read about uh, Zoom or Reverse Flash, where he just went about recreating the accident. Oh yeah, <laughs> heard of those. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, it, they're all dumb. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't even, I wouldn't even start. I'm gonna say it, like, it sounds like dumb. a worse yeah. version of Flash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, in in Flashpoint, no, the, the, the animated movie, the the no. reverse in, Flash. Yes, yeah, yeah, that also has reverse Flash. But in, in Flashpoint, he like Flash gets into that the world's rewritten, and he doesn't have powers, and so he's like, all right, now we need science to recreate the accident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a man who can't go fast enough. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say, though, actually, man, I really shouldn't <laughs> even be talking no, about this anymore. Don't. But <laughs> <laughs> if there was a year one for Flash, and although I, I don't know if this was, like, part of the intention of Jake's original question, but if it was happening right after Crisis on Infinite Earths, Technically, the Flash um, that was starting at that time was Wally West because um, mm -hmm. they were they had oh, just yeah, killed true. Barry Allen mm -hmm. and they put him as yeah, the true. new Flash. Yeah. Was Crisis on Infinite Earth good? Yeah, I liked it. I always got the impression that question. it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was good at the time. Mm hmm. But now that it's actually pending the results of the next DC crisis, whether or not it is canon, uh, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> that, like, it's Will it's good it sometimes, unless it isn't because it's not canon. Unless it is again <laughs> in like five years. If you guys <laughs> like it, we'll make it canon. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. I, I will say that when I first read it, I was a little confused. Um, but I think that it was like, I felt like I was like, am I supposed to know like all of these characters? And sometimes the answer is no. They're mm. just introducing new characters. Oh, and gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that I read it and that's about it. And I remember yeah, I, think I, I liked it when I read it, which yeah. was six years ago at least. I thought you were going to say yeah. when you were six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, they well, could yeah, have like yeah. No, I, I'd probably be bored if I was six. It, it's it's uh, complicated. It's long <laughs> and complicated. Yeah. <laughs> that always makes yeah. for a good story. Yeah. And and I think I, I, I at least read it within the last six years. <laughs> <laughs> Glowing reviews all around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, Batman Year One, I feel like 
Uh, Superman would be the only choice. Uh, I disagree with the Flash take, basically. See, to me, it's like... I kind of want to see the Flash one just to see how bad it would be. <laughs> see, maybe it's just because, like, I know Superman more. Mm. But, like, I feel like him and Metropolis have just, like, already been very well defined. Yeah. yeah. And so, to me, redoing it is just treading old ground. Right, yeah. I mean, like, what they did for... The like, you know, this time period was basically John Byrne's run on Superman, where, mm. or well, first they did Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, which was an ending for the Silver Age Superman, mm. and then uh, mm. John Byrne's run right after that, which, like, basically kind of brought in whatever elements that they felt like were best and kind of, like, re redefined. So, like, they, they basically did do it. It's just different. It's not necessarily a year one. Mm, okay. But, hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, mm, yeah. But, and, and I guess I'm more thinking about any other characters that I would be interested in. And I, th- I think it really comes down to characters that I just don't know. Well, yeah. You know? Okay. I can see that. Um, but yeah. I'm interested in the concept of that question, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if it was the creative team returning, honestly, I'm really just interested in reading more uh, David uh, Ma- Ma- Mazzuccelli. Um I don't think that he's done much past this. Like, I mean, he does work, but, like, I think that... And you mean the art, right? Yeah, the art, yeah. I, I think that he just um, doesn't take as many comic book jobs, basically. Mm. He gets enough royalties from this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But I think that that's all we have for the show. Um, so thank you for listening. I'm Cody. I'm Taylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps us out in the YouTube algorithms and helping us being seen by more and more people. And be sure to hit the bell notification so that you won't miss a single video. And if you're listening to us on podcast format, be sure to rate and review our podcast as that also helps us out in the algorithms and being seen by more and more people. Thank you and have a blessed day.